You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. Uh, we have here today uh, Danelle Jones, who's written a new book, The Whimsical Muse. Danelle's taught literature and creative writing for more than 30 years, um, and she's an award-winning author of nonfiction and also an award-winning poet. Uh, Interviewing here today, we have a guest interviewer, Tammy Holland, who is also an award-winning poet and published author. Her latest book is What Does Not Return. Tammy's offered creative writing workshops in a wide variety of settings. And like Danelle, she's a great promoter of literacy and particularly poetry. Miss Montana's Poet Laureate from August 2013 to October 2015. She's a full professor at Montana State University Billings. So at this point, I think I'll just turn it over to you, Tammy, and uh, just try to get out of your way. Thanks, Mark. Danelle, I am so excited about this new book of yours. <laughs> uh, it's unique, and uh, I can hardly wait to, to hear more about it. And so what I want to know first is, is why did you write this book? How did it come up about? Thanks, Tammy. I'm so glad to be here, so glad uh, and thankful to you for doing this interview and for Mark and Rosanna and this host House of Books for recording it uh, for us. So I wrote the book because this has to happen to us all, right? We really intend to write, we want to write, and then our life just takes over, right? We have a million things to do and the writing just doesn't get done. And this book gives us 84 reasons to write. It has 84 prompts in it, and it gives us, gives us 84 really easy reasons. Just open up the book. You don't have to prepare. You don't have to do anything. Open the book, read the first part of the prompt, and go. So uh, it really is a way to get back to our creativity when we're so often waylaid by our busy lives. So that's why I wrote it, just to give people a little extra nudge towards creativity. Oh, that's great. Well, um, could you talk a little bit about why at this particular time when we have been, you know, perhaps so overstressed by so many, so many things, particularly the pandemic, uh, why is it a good book for this particular time? You know, uh, in my many years of teaching and my many years of writing, like you, like many of us out there, I've written since I was a young person. It's always been important to me. And one thing that you learn over these years is that using your creativity actually gives you energy. It, um, it lifts your spirit. And so I think basically once you, once you get going, that's the big hurdle, right? Is just getting going. Because once you get going, once you start writing, once you start getting those words on the page, writing is a way to get out of all that stuff that's going on, the chaos that's going on, the pandemic, all that stuff, and just immerse yourself into this wonderful world of your creative imagination. And the thing that I always tell my students, and it really genuinely is true, the more you use your imagination, the more you have. It is our essential renewable resource. So if you're feeling that you're not being creative in your life and other things, Doing these kinds of exercises can just really ignite that kind of creative mind and you can bring it to other parts of your life as well. So I think these, these prompts, being creative is a great way to face some, what are some really tough times for people? Yeah, I, I think that's right. Um, and I couldn't agree more. This book is different though than other books. I mean, there are many, many books out there that have to do with writing poetry and you know they provide a lot of prompts. You've adopted a really unique method in this book, um, which involves a two-part process or two options. Could you talk just a little bit about what that is and, and where it came from? Yeah, you know, I was thinking this, these prompts were written for real students. 
And this was a community class that really inspired me to do these prompts. And these people had full-time jobs. And I thought, okay, I want them to write poetry. And I was inviting them to write poetry every day in April, National Poetry Month. But I thought, you know, some of them are just gonna have five minutes uh, at the tail end of their lunchtime or five minutes before a meeting to go into. So I thought I'm gonna do two parts. And the first part I'll call quick, right? And these quick parts, the first part of the prompt you can do if you really only just have three minutes. You just read it and you start writing. Let whatever comes into your head comes in. But then I also thought, well, what if they want to take this a little farther? And so I have a second part called lingering. So if you have more time, you can write the first part of the prompt and then go on to the second part, which invites you to go deeper into the poem or invites you to do a little turn. And so I think the two part prompt has this nice quality. Not only can you spend more time working on your poem, but it also shows you ways to go deeper into your poem. And it shows you that poems can start in one place and then have a turn in the middle that sort of takes you off in another direction and really makes your poems uh, deeper and richer. And I think that's sort of an exciting thing for poets at any level to really be reminded that their poems can have uh, different layers and different directions. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, it's almost like the second one could, could be uh, a prompt for revising the first one to revise. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, and I would say if people are not, haven't used prompt books, uh, the, the word is total freedom. You don't have to do them in order. Uh, you don't have to follow the directions exactly. If you want to alter it, alter it. If you like, oh, I don't like that part. I'm not going to do that. Don't do that. So just have fun with it. Do it backwards. Open it at random pages. Um, do it with friends. Uh, it's really meant to be used in any way that serves your creative imagination. Wonderful. Well, there's one other part of each of the prompts. Uh, you have selected quotations from particular authors as a lead-in to these quick and lingering prompts. And I wonder if you would just share with us a couple of your prompts um, so that we can get a real feel for what these are like. And I might mention too, each is only a page. So yes. that too, I think makes it very appealing and uh, we don't get daunted by pages and pages of... Thanks. Exactly. And I don't know if you can tell, but, you know, it's not a real fat book. It'll fit right into your backpack or your purse or your book bag or maybe even your back pocket if you have cargo pants. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I'm going to read um, from the first one because I think this will sort of let people know where we're at. Uh, the quote is from Bruce Lansky, and it's from a poem in which he describes... Um, like all the reasons that um, he can't write a poem today. Uh, let's see, the title of the poem is, I can't write a poem. So what I wanted to do was say, look, you know, you're thinking I can't write a poem. You have all those thoughts in your mind. So the quick prompt says, list the reasons why you can't write today. Your reasons can be big or small or both. Feel free to whine and be crabby. So basically the book opens by inviting you to just be snarky if you want to about why you can't write a poem. And then the lingering section says, now create the most outrageous excuses that you can imagine for not writing. For example, and then I give a few examples. Creatures from outer space wearing Spiderman jammies are asking for French toast. The laundry left in the washer has turned into a deadly fungus that threatens the planet or the FBI is at your door asking questions. Um, you can return to the truth if you like, or you can just let yourself be carried away by fantastical justifications. So that's the sort of spirit. I think that's why I called it the whimsical muse. Uh, the subtitle is poetic plays for busy creatives. And the essence of this book is about playing and I want my readers and writers to think of it, think of their page as their creative playground. And that's what I, I hope the book inspires is a sense of freedom and joy and silliness and 
uh, whimsicality. So another example uh, of a prompt that's a little less uh, silly than that one begins with a quotation from Lucille Clifton. And the quotation is from an interview with her. And it says, I think that we're beginning to remember that the first poets didn't come out of a classroom, that poetry began when somebody walked off of a savanna or out of a cave and looked up at the sky with wonder and said, ah, oh, that was the first poem. And so the prompt for this is a really solid prompt that asks us, that asks us to look at the natural world. So quickly, begin by looking at something in the natural world. The sky, as suggested by Lucille Clifton, or the moon, grass, dirt, snow, mountains, an ant, a leaf, a rock. Describe it as if you were the first person ever to see it. So I love that beginning of the prompt because the skill of observation is something that we as poets or any kind of writer needs to always be practicing, right? It's a way for us, as Virginia Woolf would say, to practice our scales. Observation is one of our foundational skills. But I especially like the lingering turn on this one too, because the lingering part says, now allow the thing, sky, the snow, the ant, to say something directly to you. So the fun thing about this poem is it starts with this observation, and then suddenly it asks you as the poet to imagine being this thing, this ant, the sky, the snow, and speaking an entirely new voice. So I think that will show readers and writers the kind of things that you can do in a poem, the kind of turns that can be interesting. And ultimately, what I hope these prompts do is get people in the habit of mind of thinking, oh, how can I make a shift here? What can I kind of turn can happen here that's going to make my poem richer or deeper or more interesting? And that's what I like about the two-part prompts. Thank you so much, Danelle. It's been such a pleasure to talk with you today. And, um, and I look forward to, you know, using this book in my classroom and sharing it with others. Thank you, Tammy. And thank you for being here. And again, thank you, Mark and Rosanna and This House of Books for hosting us and for being such a wonderful resource here in our, com our community. Tammy, actually, I wanted to end um, by reading a poem by Tammy. It's one of my favorite Tammy poems. And this is from her first book of poems called Breath in Every Room. And I just think it's, it really is one of my favorite poems. And for those of us in Montana, um, it'll have special meaning, but I think it'll have meaning for anybody. It's called Golden Eye Vole. I say sweep of prairie or curve of sandstone, but it doesn't come close to this language of dry wind and deer prints and blue racer and sage. It's punctuation, white quartz and bone. I learned mounds of mayflowers, needle grass on ankles, the occasional sweet pea, before I knew words like perspective or travesty or the permanence of loss. My tongue spoke obsidian, red agate, arrowhead. I stepped through teepee rings, leaped buffalo grass and puffball to petrified clam, jawbone of fox and flint, blue lichen, gray feather, golden eye vole, Speak to me, my prairie darling. Sing me that song you know. One of my favorites, Tammy. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Danelle. <laughs> this has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative, please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved. I'm definitely using it. Um, okay. Whether my class will make, but <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah I definitely want to use it. Fingers crossed on that. Fingers crossed. I'm going to put it in as an adoption. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you.